Amen. Uh, let's look unto our promise. We are still with our promise. Uh, how many of you remember what the promise for the year is? Can we all say that together? And the words that we have is from 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. We are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. We heard messages on this, and uh, I believe it's all our desire that we should be spiritually transformed. Amen? We should be spiritually changed. And one of the things that we never looked into is the next words, which is the direction. And what does the direction say? Amen. It's from Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. So today what God has put in my heart is to talk to you about the direction for the year. How many of you want to be changed? How many of you want to do more for the Lord? How many of us really hunger and thirst and say, Lord, I want to be changed. I'm fed up with my Christian walk where I am. We heard about the power of God. We heard about what Jesus and his disciples did. But I want to be in that place. Brother Paul talked about that you will do greater things than Jesus did. But then why aren't we doing that? And today I want to talk to you about this direction that God has given us. And it will be more like a teaching. But let me tell you today, if you take this word, your life will never be the same again. Amen? So we are going to look into this. Uh, this is from Isaiah. Uh, I'm going to talk about this direction only. How many of you know how many chapters in the book of Isaiah? Bible quiz. 66. How many books in the Bible? Wow. Is there a resemblance of both? Amen. Isaiah, Isaiah is divided into two divisions. The first 39 chapter talks about salvation. And the last uh, chapters talk about the judgment. What does the Bible do? The same thing. The first chapter of Isaiah talks about the initial earth coming into place. Isaiah talks about the initial about the Israelites. There's a lot of resemblance into both of these. How many of you know who wrote Isaiah? Oh, wow. That was very good. <laughs> so Isaiah wrote Isaiah. All right. Let's uh, read this words uh, starting from the 28th words. Isaiah chapter 40 starting on 28th words. Shall we all read together just to wake you all up? Have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might. He increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen? That is the direction that we have got. God spoke to us in the beginning of or the end of the last year. And that's the direction that we have. I'm going to talk to you about a Christian discipline that many of us believers, we do not follow. We all know that when we wait upon the Lord, we renew our strength. Yes. Actually, the Hebrew word there is exchange. What happens is your weakness is exchange for God's strength. It talks about that those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Many of us, we Christians, we believers, we do not practice this Christian discipline. It's called waiting on the Lord. Or it's called waiting for the Lord. The old translations all talk about waiting on the Lord and the new translations all talk about waiting for God. So I'm going to ask you, in your opinion, what does it mean to wait upon the Lord? All answers are right. Don't worry. No scores for it. Anybody? Sorry? Wait to hear from God. Good. Wait patiently. Trust in the Lord. Be still and know that He is Lord. Amen. Good. Getting the revelation of Jesus. Okay. Wait on the way that He transforms us. Yes. When you wait upon the Lord, you get transformed. That's true. 
So what is waiting on the Lord? See, we all want to renew our strength. Amen? We all want new strength. We get tired of a lot of things and we want new strength. We want to mount up with wings like eagles. We all want to be there. You've seen an eagle soaring in the sky. How beautiful it soars. I'll talk about eagle. And then we want to run through this life without getting weary. We want to walk through our problems and not get tired or faint. But then how do we do that? The word of God says that we need to wait on the God. And when we wait on God, that's when things happen. He said there's a strength that is coming upon each one of us. It says, mentions about renewing strength and gaining new strength. It mentions the strength of an eagle's wing that lifts it high above the earth. It mentions the strength necessary to run without getting away, weary. It mentions about the strength to walk without getting faith. So in order for us to renew our strength, what is it that we need to do? In order to mount up like eagle and fly in the sky, what do we need to do? To run and not get weary, what do we need to do? To walk and not get faint, what do we need to do? And that is the direction that God gave us. As we study this word, we know that something has to happen if we need to come to that place. And that something is waiting on God. Don't your neighbor and say, waiting on God. So the, to, 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 the key to unlocking these words is waiting upon God. See, the first thing that it talks about is that you will mount up with eagle, eagle's wings. Uh, you know, eagle is a bird that is talked quite a lot about in the Bible. Again, quiz. How many times in the Bible is the word eagle mentioned? Three times. Wow. Can we add one? Eight also to it. Make it 38 times. <laughs> 38 times the word eagle is mentioned in the Bible. So there's something that we can learn from the Bible. Let me give you a background that they shall mount up with wings like eagle. So we go for a zoology class. All these days I've been teaching botany and geology and now zoology. All right. Uh, the eagle is mentioned in the Bible. And the two types of eagle that is found in the Middle East is imperial eagles and royal eagles. The royal word comes in because of the golden color of these eagles. In the Middle East, these are the two types of eagles that you find. Now, when an eagle normally lives to, a, a wild eagle will live to 30 to 40 years in, in the wilderness. And mostly after that 30 to 40 years, they die. But some eagles can live much more than that. And to live much more than that, they have to do something. So what happens when eagle who wants to live more than that, he flies to a mountain where he's away from every other uh, birds and this. He goes and sits in that mountain. And the first thing that he does is on the rock, he rubs its beak and tries to destroy his beak. When an eagle grows to be a 30 or 5 or 40 years old, the beak becomes crooked. And that beak is the one that helps it to get food. Now, most of the uh, eagles in the wilderness die because they can't hunt. Their tendons, that is the, the claws, they also become very crooked. It is exactly keratin, the same material that we have for our nails. That is for the beak and the, and the tendons of the eagle. So these become crooked. The beaks become crooked that it cannot hunt. And normally what happens when it can't get food, it starves and it dies in the wilderness. But those eagles, they want to live, they are determined to live much longer. They will go into this mountain and they will sit on that mountain, rub its beak against the rock. Once that beak, uh, the, 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 just like a nail comes out, the, uh, the things come out and then it starts growing a new one. So that crooked beak is now changed to the beak that an eagle needs to catch its foot. The same thing happens with tendons. It rubs it. Uh, uh, once a beak is there, it removes that. And those crooked claws, which cannot grab its prey, is now become good. So once a beak comes in, what does the eagle do? It starts removing its feathers. As the eagle grows uh, old, there's a lot of feathers that come upon him. And the weight of that feather is actually pulled down an eagle. Now the eagle removes these feathers, a lot of it feathers. 
and he waits. He waits and all he does is look unto the sun. You know, eagle is an only bird that can look at a sun and not close its eyes. It's got two eyelids, not one. It's got two eyelids and that bird that can look straight into uh, the sun and not wear, wear, uh, close its eyes, that sort of thing. And then it waits day. After its new feathers have come, the new beak has come and it's got its new tendons. The eagle from that high mountain takes off and he soars into the sky. And that is the word that comes here. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. You shall renew your youth like an eagle. There's another word that says how now this eagle has become young, not uh, physically, but he's got new feathers, new beak, new tendons. It has become young and that's how it goes. What happened? The old strength of the eagle is completely gone and the new strength has come into it that now he can soar into the mountains. And you must have seen how beautiful that uh, eagle soaring into the mountains is. You know, eagles do everything high up. When a storm comes in, what does the eagle do? The eagle flies above the storm. That's what you and me we as Christians need to know. We need to be above the storm knowing who is holding our hand? It is Jesus that we need to have confidence in. So when the e storms come in, all the birds will uh, make sounds and try to get a shelter. But an eagle takes off and goes high above the storm. You know, I was talking to a captain long back of a merchant navy. And I asked him, when you have the storms in the sea, what do you do? You would be having a tough time. He says, we find where the eye of the storm is. We try to go into the eye of the storm. That is the safest place. Similarly, you and me as believers, we can get into the arms of Jesus Christ. That is the safest place. Just uh, getting out of my message since we are on eagle. You know how many of you know how an eagle mate? Just for your information, eagle has only one mate right through its lifetime. Unless one of them dies. They do not change their mates like we human beings do. They don't have divorce. <laughs> yeah. They keep one right till the end. A female, uh, when, he wants, when she wants to mate, the female eagle will go up into the sky. He'll have a twig, a wooden twig in her hand, uh, on her claws. He'll go. Once she finds a male that she likes or is interested in, she will go drop that twig from the air. And if this male will see this, and if he is interested in her, he will go dive. Take this twig and take it back to her. It not happens once. Again, the female just wants to make sure. Ladies, make sure you've got the right partners. Yeah. So to make sure that you have the right partner, the eagle again takes the twig, goes up where this guy is and drops it again. And this guy, if he likes her, he will pick it up and go and give it to her. This happens a couple of times. Once they are known that they, are, they like each other, you know, both the tendons are put together and they just come trampling down. They, uh, the eagles make the relations in heaven. You and me, we need God in our relationship. And that's very important. And before they fall to the earth, you know, they take off again. They just come from, you can see it sometimes. You can see they both are put the claws like this and they come tumbling down. Just before they hit the ground, they actually take off. Amen. We, we can learn a lot from eagle, but today that is not my message. Let's move on. So, the word wait is so very important. Today we are standing in a, in a supermarket. We are standing in a queue. There are about six people. In the other line, there are three people. What would we do? Not we. What the ladies will do? You will shift to this line. And then you stand there. Then you look, huh? That line has become faster. It's going faster. We cannot wait. How many of us men, we get upset waiting in a traffic signal? If a guy in front of us, the traffic signal has become green, we, it doesn't move. I mean, the car in front of us, what do you do? Don't tell me you don't press horn. Where is your patience? Wait is a word that we don't want. Today we are living in a microwave world. We put something, it's got to be hot. If you ask for God for something, you've got to answer immediately. But let me tell you, you want to get to the next level in your Christian walk, you need to learn to wait upon God. The Greek word that is used is kawa. Kawa means 
Q-A-V-A-H. It means to wait, to look for, hope, expect. And it is not a lazy waiting that God is talking about. It is an active waiting. It's not that you go and sleep there in, in, in the presence of God. Yes, you come to a stage where you do that, but that's much later. But when you wait for God, it is an active wait that you're waiting. At the end of this, I will try to tell you how to wait for that. I mean, although I've been practicing it as I was studying this word for the last uh, three, four months, three, three months, God has changed a lot of things in my own life. Even yesterday, even yesterday, my family was not there, but they were all out. And I just thought, Lord, let me give you 10 minutes of waiting. And I just sat in the presence of God doing nothing. I had a uh, worship song that was going on, just focusing on God. And then I realized, oh my God, 45 minutes have gone through. I didn't realize it. When you wait upon God, when you wait in His presence, I'll tell you, time is not at all a matter. And then I, I, I just stepped out and said, oh, I have to prepare the message for today. But let me tell you, life will never, never be the same. It's not about prayer. It's not about reading word. Yes, you need all that. But we need to come to a place where we learn to wait on God. This is stepping to a higher level. And we need to wait. Let's look at a few scriptures. Psalm chapter 27, verse 14. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for the Lord. Amen? It says, wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. You know, we Christians, we believers, we cannot keep silent. We need to keep talking and talking and talking. You know, sometimes we think that God is there in the big noises. But there are times we got to be silent. Be still and know that I am God. There are times when we got to be so silent and be in His presence. Let me just go through, I mean, cut off a few things, sorry. So, there are different strengths that you get when you wait upon God. The first one is the inward strength that comes in. The second one is the upward strength. We talked about mount up like eagles. The outward strength, they will run and not be weary. And then the onward strength for your life to move forward. They shall walk and not faint. So, we need the strength. And this strength we can only receive when we wait upon the Lord. Let's look at uh, uh, Psalm chapter 25, words 1 to 5. Again, we'll just read that again. We, learned, we need to learn to quiet our soul and stay before God. It's not easy. It's difficult. But when you learn to do that, I'll tell you, your life will never be the same again. We will learn what happens when you wait upon God. So Psalm 25, words 1 to 5. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies tri triumph over me. Indeed, let no one who waits on you be ashamed. Let those be ashamed who deal treacherously without cause. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your path. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are God of my salvation. On you, I will wait all day. David is saying, even if it requires that I should wait on you the whole day, I will do it. The one more thing that you could know is when you wait upon God, you will never be ashamed. You will be never be put to shame when you learn to wait on God. See, twice it says here, wait on God. Let, indeed, let no one who waits on God be ashamed. Let those be ashamed. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your path. There are many things of God. His ways, His paths, you will never learn unless we learn to wait on God. Your, your, your time, uh, devotion time is very good. But we need to cross from that devotion time to a time that we wait in God's presence. And I'll teach you how to do that. But when we practice, don't say I'm going to do it for two hours every day. No, start with five minutes, ten minutes. As you grow, I'll tell you, you'll become so addicted to it. That you don't want to go anywhere else. You just want to spend time in His presence. So here we have two great things that we learned from here. And I believe, teach me your paths, teach me your truth. His truth will be revealed to us when we sit in His presence. When we wait upon the Lord, that is when some of the things we will learn from Him. There's no other way that we will learn. For you are the God of my salvation. If God is the God of your salvation, then we need to be people who learn to wait upon Him. And 
and that is very important. Let's move on to Psalm 27, verse 11 to 14. If we do not prepare to wait on God, there are a lot of things we will never, never learn. So it's very important that we learn to wait on God. It says, teach me your ways, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and such as breathe out violence. I would have lost heart unless I believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Again it says, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Again the psalmist is saying uh, twice here, he says, wait on the Lord, be of good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. See, he shall strengthen your heart. It's so very important that when we go through circumstances, where we go through situations in our life, our heart gets weakened. The only way to strengthen our hearts is to learn to wait upon the Lord. And uh, our, I'm just going now quick because I just saw the time there. Isaiah 64, verse 4. Isaiah 64, verse 4. This gives us a diff or this differentiates the true God from other gods. Isaiah 64 verse 4. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, nor has I seen any God besides you who acts for one who waits on him. How many of us want God to act on our behalf? In our workplace, in our family, in our health, in every area of our life, we want God to act in, on our lives. And God will act upon those who wait upon Him. The one differentiation that is between our God and every other G, small g gods is our God will act upon those who wait upon Him. And we need to learn to wait upon God so that we would be blessed. Our lives will never be the same again. So there's one true distinction, uh, mark of true God. That he acts on behalf of those who wait for them. Now I want you to go to Psalm chapter 62, words 1 and 2 and 5 and 6. Psalm chapter 62, words 1 and 2 and 5 and 6. Truly, uh, I don't think you have the New American Standard Bible, do you? Okay, uh, I want to read this version because it brings out something. My soul waits in silence for God only. My soul waits in silence for God only. From Him is my salvation. It says, He only is my rock and my salvation. My stronghold, I shall not be greatly shaken. My soul waits in silence for God only, for my hope is from Him. He only is my rock and my salvation. My stronghold, I shall not be shaken. In these four words, you will hear the word only. Why does the psalmist say that I wait upon, the, upon God only? Because he knows that our God is the only source. Everything comes from Him. When we learn to wait upon Him, we will not be running behind things. We will not go to different areas to achieve things. When we wait upon Him, we know that He and He and He alone is our source. He says, that's why he added this word only. That's why I took this translation. My soul's wait in silence for God only. When you're waiting upon God, one of the things we learn to, learn to do is we need to wait upon Him in silence. As a believer, it's so difficult for us to uh, wait upon Him in silence. Sometimes we get into uh, group prayer groups and we start praying and then suddenly everybody is prophesying and becomes uh, quite noisy on the whole thing. But there are times we need to be silent in the presence of God. And I'll tell you, when you learn to experience just sent, waiting upon God in silence, I'll tell you, your life will never be the same again. Amen? And here, so the word only occurs four times there. Every time the psalmist speaks about waiting for God, he adds wait for God only. He's talking about waiting for God in silence. So what are the results that we get upon waiting upon God? The first one is, we acknowledge God in a very, very special way. We give Him the rightful place in our own lives when we wait upon Him. We build a relation with Him that cannot be built any other way. Amen? So the three ways that we acknowledge God. 
the first one i said is that god is our only source when we wait upon him when we depend upon him when we sit there in silence and know who our god is we will know that he is only our source we have no other source your company is not your source your family is not your source your church is not he is our source when we come to that place and to know that lord you only are my source and that happens when you wait upon him we will always be running behind the trees we will be running behind things because we have not waited upon god but when we wait upon god we will know that he only is our source amen you have to keep your heart and your mind focused on god when you're waiting upon him i told you waiting upon god is an active waiting you might be sitting there you might be kneeling there you might have a uh, of a, a worship song that is going very softly on there but you just sitting very actively and let me tell you god turns up amen when you sit in that wait in his presence very often he is there amen so we need to learn to when you wait upon god you will know that he only is my source we would not be worried what happens all around why because we know who our source is our source will never leave you nor forsake you those who put their trust in him will never be put to shame that is our source but that will happen when we wait upon him amen the second one is we acknowledge god's sovereignty what well, rajesh talked about time initiative is in god's hand the timing is in god's hand sometimes we need to read the book of ecclesiastes ecclesiastes it talks about time for everything it talks about it's so very important we can never tell god what to do it's god's timing we need to come to a place to know that god's timings is the best in our life we might want things happen quickly we might want things happen later but god knows the right time when we when we sit in his presence when we wait upon god we will acknowledge that he is a sovereign god the timing is in his hands the initiative is in his hands and in his infinite wisdom he will bring it to pass at the right time but when does this happen when we wait upon him otherwise what happens we become anxious we become fretting we go through all sort of situations but when we learn to wait upon god we will know that god is a sovereign god his timing is the best for us his plans is the best for us we could put our own plans together but let me tell you his plan is better than our plans he loves us better than we love ourselves amen and he is the alpha and the omega is the beginning and the end he knows the end from the beginning and it's so very important that when we sit in his presence we come to a place that we know that he is a sovereign god and the third thing that happens when you wait upon his presence you will learn to depend upon him amen we will acknowledge our dependence on him since mankind fell off since mankind fell off we have become people who don't want to depend on anybody there are people ourselves we don't want to depend upon god we want to do it ourselves that's why you hear in the world i did it i achieved it i made it it's not me it's all about god when we sit in his presence when we wait upon god we will know that it is only god our dependence on things of this world our dependence on people will go away and our dependence on god will increase amen so that's very important that we need to wait upon god Can we just go back to those words in 62? I want to show you one one more thing before I move on. Okay, he is my rock and my salvation, my defense and my fortress. I shall not be greatly moved. It says I shall not be greatly moved. Let's go look at verse 6. He is my defense and my fortress. I shall not be moved. What happened? Initially there was that I will be moved. But when you wait on the Lord now we saying i shall not be moved stability comes into our lives when we learn to wait upon god when we sit in that presence waiting upon him maybe you were shakeable at that time when you started but as you sit in his presence you shall not be moved stability comes into our lives when we wait upon god and so very important that we need to learn to wait upon god so in other words waiting upon god develops stability now let's look at Uh, Isaiah 30 verse 18 
we are not only waiting upon God. God is waiting upon each one of us. Isaiah 30, verse 18, please. And therefore, the, this is what Amplified. Waits expectingly. Okay. Therefore, the Lord will wait that he may be gracious to you. And therefore, he will be exalted that he may have mercy on you. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all those who wait on him. It is not only we who wait on God. And we think, oh Lord, I'm waiting on you. No. God is waiting upon each one of us. There is a plan and purpose that God has for each one of us. And that can be fulfilled when we learn to wait on God. Like someone mentioned, we learn to hear from God. In that silence, when we keep our mouth shut, God starts speaking to us. And that happens when we wait upon Him. And so it becomes very important that we need. So you need to remember, it is not only we are waiting on God. God is waiting on each one of us. It is a mutual thing. And why does God want, uh, why is uh, God waiting on those who wait for Him? It's because He wants to show His mercy. He wants to show His grace upon those who wait upon Him. Therefore the Lord will wait that He may be gracious to you. He will be gracious to you and me. When we learn to wait on God, God will be so gracious to each one of us. Amen. Now, uh, I just want to continue with that. Uh, I have time, yes. Uh, so what more does waiting on God do? Let's look at James chapter 1, verse 2 and 4. So we looked at that God is our only source. We acknowledge that God is our only source. We acknowledge God's sovereignty in our lives. And we, uh, when we wait on God, we also learn that we acknowledge our dependence upon God. And this happens when we wait on Him. Let's move on. So James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the strength of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect, complete, lacking nothing. Amen? It says, so that you may be complete, lacking nothing. The other words, they use the word mature. Here they use the word perfect. In some translation, that you may be mature and complete. How can you be mature and complete? By the testing of your faith. When your testing of your faith comes in, there is perseverance, there is patience. And that patience come in when you wait upon God. Amen. All of us want to be mature and complete. And the only way to be mature and complete is by waiting on God. And that is very important. Because otherwise we will never go through that test of faith. We will never come to a place of perseverance. We will never come to a place of patience in our life. And we will always be anxious to do things our own way. So we need to come to a place where we wait upon God so that we may be mature and complete. When can your ministry start uh, progressing? When can your ministry start bringing results? When we are mature and complete. Why is there so much fight between people, pastors, churches, uh, board members? It's because we are not mature and complete. When we have become mature and complete, then we will be uplifting the name of Jesus Christ and doing what He wants us to do. But we don't have time for that. We don't have time to wait upon God. And that's why all these things happen in our life. Amen? So wait for uh, God in silence. Wait for God only. Only one who can meet your needs is Him. Amen? So the second one is, uh, waiting upon God produces serenity. Waiting on God produces serenity. Psalm 37, verse 7 to 9. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Do not fret because of Him who prospers in His way, because of man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anchor and forsake wrath. Do not fret, it only causes harm. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Amen? In some of the translation it says, they shall inherit the world. It's the same meaning that you have on the earth. So it's very important that we wait, wait patiently for Him. Do not fret. We talked about serenity. See, what is fret? Fret is being anxious about something, you know. And it says here, cease from anger and forsake wrath. How many of us have problem with uh, anger and wrath? I don't know if the wives break plates, but I heard more of the husbands throw glasses and plates. I'm not too sure about that. But how many of us do that? That, you know, there is, there's a difference between anger and wrath. Somebody put it this way. When the water is boiling and the steam is coming out, that is anger. Uh, sorry, when the water is boiling, that is anger. But then when the steam comes out, that is wrath. Amen? And the Bible says, so how do we stop this anger and wrath? Very simple, switch off the stove. What does that mean? Wait upon the Lord. 
when we wait upon the Lord, His character becomes your character. Amen? You become like Jesus. There's no anger, there's no wrath. Why are so many families being destroyed? Why are children going offhand? It's because there is wrath and anger in the family. And the way to overcome that is to wait upon the Lord. When you wait upon the Lord, there is no anger. What happens? You become gentle. You become humble. You become meek. What does uh, Matthew 5, 5 talks, uh, Jesus talks, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. We need to inherit the earth. We need to be blessed in what we need. So how do we do that? Wait upon the Lord. Are you coming to that point where you hunger and a thirst to wait upon Him? Amen. I'll tell you, your life will never be the same again. Amen. Waiting on the last one, okay, uh, I talked to you about that. Waiting on God produces supernatural transformation. The same words we read from Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen? Supernatural strength will come upon us when we wait upon the Lord. Let me give you a story. How many of you saw this movie, Chariots of Fire? Don't worry, it's a Christian movie. <laughs> Pastor is not promoting any All right. Uh, good that you all didn't know. I can tell you a story about it. Uh, there is a guy called Eric Little. Eric Little is an athlete. He's a believer. Uh, for him, Sunday is Sabbath day. He will not do anything but serve the Lord on that day. So in 1924, Paris Olympics, he represented Britain. His, uh, his event was 100 meters, 100 meters. So what happened is when he was going for this Olympics, he realized that the heat for the Olympics was on a Sunday. And for Eric, God comes before anything else. He's been working four years to run this event, practicing day and day out to attend this 100 meters. And he was sure to win the gold medal. When he realized that Sunday was his Sabbath day, that was Sabbath day for him, and he had to go to church and he used to shout the word, he said, Sorry, I will not participate in this heat because God comes first for me. He went and waited on God that day. He did not run that heat. Uh, one of his uh, other athletes, uh, uh, it was not as strict as these days, he managed to get him into a 400 meter run. Eric has never run a 400 meters. And he never know what a 400 meters is. a short distance runner, 100 meters, record maker, everything. And finally, that day came that he was going to run the 400 meters. And he started, the, they shot the gun, there he took off. Eric was running 400 meters like a 100 meter guy. So he was completing his uh, 100 meters in that 400 meters in less than uh, 12 seconds, which was Quite a record. Everybody is saying, what's wrong? He'll get tired. He's going to fall off now. You can't run a 400 meters uh, race at 100 meters speed. No way. The first 100 finish. The second, he still ran at the same speed as 100 meters. People say, hey, what's happening? This guy will fall off now. He will faint. He did the 300 at the same time as the 100. And he completed the race, won the gold medal in 1924 Olympics. What happened? He got supernatural transformation. Why? Because he waited upon God. My brothers and sisters, you and me, we need to get that supernatural transformation so that things happen in our workplace, things happen in this world. We know who our source is. We know who our strength is. We need to have that exchange of strength, you know. What happened to Eric? God gave him his strength. So he did an inhuman uh, thing. He ran that whole race at 100 meter speed. You and me, me we need that strength of God. We have been trying to depend on our own strength. We are trying to do things our way, plan things our way. We need to come to a place where we acknowledge that, God, you are my source. God, I have depended upon you. Lord, you are a sovereign God who knows what time is right for, right for each one of us. But well, we need to come to a place that we need to learn to wait upon God. I'm just going to skip a few things. All right. Let's look at David because I believe God wants to pray for some of you. Some of you want to make a decision today and say, Lord, I want to get to the next step. If that is you, will pray for you. I don't want to let the good, that time go off. That just came to me. Wait on the Lord was one of David's secrets. In 2 Samuel 7, verse 18, 
David went in and sat before the Lord. David went in and sat before the Lord. God was his confidence and he trusted him in every aspect of his life for guidance and instructions. I'm not reading the scriptures. Psalm 25 verse 5. For his help and defense, Psalm 33, 20. For victory over his enemies and vindication, Psalm 37. For deliverance from trouble and destruction, Psalm 40. And if you want to get into deliverance ministry, you need to wait upon the Lord. You need his strength, you need his guidance, you need his gifts, you need the discernment. So you need to learn to wait upon God. I believe God wants glorious ministry to come to that next level. The time of just coming to the church and warming, I'm talking about everybody here. Those days are gone. It's time to step off. The coming of the Lord is so very near. This world needs to see the power of our Lord Jesus Christ and exalt His name. If you and me, we only talk about Jesus but doesn't show the power of Jesus to others, people will not come to you. It's time that you and me learn to wait upon the Lord. We need to come to that place. Yes, Bible reading is important. Bible study is important. Meditation of the word is important. Prayer is important. Take it a step further. Sit in His presence. I'll tell you, your life will never be the same again. You'll enjoy it so much. But don't blabber, don't do anything. Sit in His presence, listen. Say, I used to say, Lord, here I am listening to you. I'll tell you what, He can talk to you. You will get His strength. Nothing in this world, will, uh, uh, the Bible talks in Philippians, be anxious for nothing. You'll never be anxious again. Why? Because you know who your source is. You know who your provider is. You know who your strength is. This words in some uh, uh, Isaiah 40 verse 31. It, the original meaning is you will exchange your strength. How many of you have won God's strength? We can never be strong, my brothers and sisters. But He is very strong. Today, are we hungry for that strength? I think I'll stop here. Are we hungry for that strength? Are we willing to say, Lord, yes, I want to change. I want to be transformed. Yes, I want to take a step further. Don't plan one hour waiting upon God. You will fail. Start with 10 minutes. Let it increase every day. Make it twice a week or uh, even more. I don't know. I'm just telling you, don't let the devil take that off from you. God has given us a direction. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew the strength. Mount up. Like eagles, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That is the direction. We are hungry for being spiritually transformed. We want to be changed. We want people to see Jesus in each one of us. So that this world, yes, Brother Paul talked about, it is time for the church to rise up, to go and evangelize. But before we go and evangelize, we got to be prepared. Many, many years ago, before I became a pastor, or just after I became a pastor, there was a visiting pastor who stayed with me. And I asked him, what is the advice you have for me? He said, Dennis, before you go out for God, wait in His presence. And that is the secret of God's strength. I'll tell you what, just imagine we all, we all wait in the presence of God. And when we come here together, I'll tell you there will be a mighty presence of God. You and me, we carry the presence of God. Worship leaders, when you wait upon God and you come and worship, I'll tell you the congregation will experience the presence of God through your worship as you lead us. It's so very important that you and me, we need to learn to wait upon God. I'll just take a few minutes. What is that waiting upon God? Is a time that you sit in His presence. You finish everything else. It's not easy. In this world, it's not easy. After five minutes, you start looking at your watch. What happened? No. No. It is an active Press, uh, sitting in His presence. Choose a place that you have that you will be sitting alone in His presence. Sometimes two of you can do together. Just sit in His presence. I'll tell you, He speaks to us. He strengthens us. He imparts His strength to us. Most of us, we say, Lord, I am Jimmy, gimme, gimme, gimme. Amen. And we run away. But let's take that step further. Come to a place we just sit in. Lord, here I am. I'm listening to you, Lord. It's not easy. Let me tell you, it's not easy. And the devil will take that time off from you. Plan a 10 minutes a week, this week. Plan and nothing is going to disturb you. You need to plan your time. You need to make a decision. Otherwise, it won't happen. We Christians are good at not making decisions. 
but we got to take a decision. Say, Lord, I heard your word, Lord. I want to sit in your presence. I want to wait upon you, Lord. And I'm just going to sit. I'll tell you, I shall never be the same again. You'll be a better husband, a better wife, a better child. Things will change. I'll tell you, peace, joy, and happiness. Things that you were waiting for. Things that you were not able to do before. You will be able to do it because his strength is made perfect in our weaknesses. And that will happen, my brothers and sisters, when we wait upon him. Put some uh, worship song, light music. Don't put a bram, dam, dam, dam. It's not in those loud things. A soft uh, worship song and just sit in his presence. Don't go to sleep when you're doing that. Actively thank God for what he has done. Not speaking out anything, but knowing everything that he is him and him and him. Why did God send his son, Jesus Christ? When man fell, we were so separated from God. God wants us back, my brothers and sisters. We read in Isaiah that he is waiting for us to show his grace to each one of us. I know we have just a few minutes. Uh, Pastor Sam, Manohar is there. Uh, I don't know, Chrissy will be on this. I know, just God just told me. We're not going to pray a long time, but you need to do something to step out, to make that decision. I don't know what's going to happen. We have the Holy Spirit in our midst this time, morning. We just want to just agree and pray with you. But if you're serious about it, I would like you don't have much time. We just got over five minutes. If you are serious and you want, God sees your heart today. You just want to come and tell Lord, yes, Lord, I want to move to the next level, Lord. And I'm going to... Do this, Lord. I'm going to learn to wait upon you. I heard your word today, Father God. And this is the direction. When, uh, I mean, I could talk to you about Abraham. I didn't talk to you about Abraham. Abraham, the main thing in his life was the offspring that God was going to bring to him. And the world was going to be changed because of that offspring. Abraham did right things in his life. He did wrong things in his life. He could not wait for God. At the age of 86, he got his smile. Because of what his wife told him to go lie with her uh, for concubine and he got a child. You know, for 13 years after that, God did not speak to Abraham. For 13 years, till Sarah conceived and was born, he did not wait upon God. Sometimes you and me, we don't wait upon God. We make our own decisions. And we call, I mean, I, uh, I've had time when I talk to you what the Bible talks about Ishmael when he came. He said he'll be a donkey. He will fight with everybody else. He'll create confusion. That's what the word of God says in uh, Genesis 15 or 16. If we don't learn to wait upon God, we will come to that.